Welcome back to the channel and welcome to the second part of my review for Jurassic Fight Club. Great. Last time we talked about four episodes, with three episodes being pure horseshit and awesome, bro. And one episode, which was Otodus Megalodon versus Primal Fisetters, um, being an actually good one. But that episode does not back up uh, the series, because Jurassic Fight Club is, like, the worst paleontology documentary on the planet. So, today we're going to talk about the rest of the episodes, except for Biggest Killers, because I don't remember anything from it, and I'm not going to watch it again, because I'm not going to suffer brain cell destruction again. So, here we go. But before we do, there are two things that I have to talk about. First, something about Ceratosaurus. Remember on my last video of my review for Jurassic Fight Club, how I said that Ceratosaurus was used as a punching bag for Allosaurus in the series, and how 2008 and 2009 were the worst years for Ceratosaurus? Yeah, no, that's bullshit. Sorry for that, guys. Because... The Ceratosaurus was never really in the show. Because, I mean, take a look at Jurassic Fight Club's Ceratosaurus. It looks nothing like the real-life counterpart. Like, should we even call Jurassic Fight Club's Ceratosaurus Ceratosaurus? No, if it doesn't look like a Ceratosaurus at all, then why call it a Ceratosaurus? Shut up, Discord. Um... Like, should we even call the dinosaurs in Jurassic Fight Club with designs that are not the five most accurate in the show? No. So, like, Ceratosaurus was never an Allosaurus punching bag. Because what we are shown in the series is certainly not a Ceratosaurus at all. Also, the worst year for Ceratosaurus was, like, 148 million years ago, because that's when Ceratosaurus died out. And then, the other thing. Remember my apology video? One of my subscribers, Tossip Eater, commented that they didn't care about what they did and how I am a W man, and that's what they care about. Um, Tossip Eater, thanks for the W man thing, but I'm not really much of a W man because of what I did. Obviously, even though I could easily have avoided that. I'm just saying that you should care about what happened, because that is something pretty serious. So, with all that settled, we can begin. Let's just get this over with. So our first episode we will be talking about is Raptor's Last Stand, where we have Gastonia versus Utah Raptor. This episode kind of pissed me off because of how stupid the Utah Raptor is. Before we get into the fight, let's talk about the designs of the animals in this episode. The Utah Raptor is the least accurate in this episode. Clearly, Jurassic Fight Club really hates feathering on dinosaurs like dromaeosaurs, and they just gave the Utah Raptor, like, 20 quails or something like that. No wings, no tail fan. I know, pretty stupid. Also, the Utah Raptor is a copied, larger, and recolored Deinonychus from the show. You know how? Not just the way it looks, the Utah Raptor in Jurassic Fight Club has the exact same intelligence level of the Deinonychus. And I don't mean that in a good way, because remember how the Deinonychus Backwards, stupid enough to go after a fully grown Tenontosaurus, which killed three quarters of their pack. Yeah, well, the Utah Raptor alone decides to attack a fully grown Gastonia. So, yeah, this Utah Raptor is an absolute dumbass. 
Then comes one of my favorite things about Jurassic Fight Club, the Astarkids. And yes, there are pterosaurs. And these Astarkids, they look incredible. So accurate. In fact, they are the most accurate design in the show. Sure, they look like small cats all quotless, but they have the right body proportions and even have pigno fibers. That's the good part about this design, but the problem with this design is that there's something that I don't understand. If Jurassic Fight Club adds pigno fibers on the pterosaurs, then why the fuck would they not add a feathering on some of the dinosaurs? Like, it's so confusing. But still, this this design still makes me happy. Then we have the Gastonia, and I think it's the fourth most accurate dinosaur design in the show. Some of the inaccuracies are the neck being shorter and the body not being flat enough, and there isn't a separate armor plate above its hips. That's pretty much it. Otherwise, the Gastonia seems pretty accurate, and it is still recognizable. Now, on to the fight. So, the Gastonia hangs around looking for food and water, even though there's green vegetation in the distance. Um, the Astarkids, which are on the back of the Gastonia, fly away when they sense danger, which alarms the Gastonia. Then the Utah Raptor comes out and is ready to make the worst mistake of its life. Fight a goddamn Gastonia! So, here's the first life lesson in Kedar Mountain formation, and it is a very important one. This is to all other formations, though. Nothing is worth the risk. Don't for- d like, sorry. Don't go for prey that can clap you. Just choose something easier. Choose something easier instead. Obviously, this Utah Raptor doesn't care about this important life lesson, or probably never learned about this, and just decides to attack the fucking Gastonia. So, the Utah Raptor charges, and the Gastonia tries to hit the Utah Raptor with its deadly tail, but the Utah Raptor jumps over the Gastonia and manages to wound the Gastonia with its claws. They fight while roaring at the top of their lungs every two seconds because this is Jurassic Fight Club. Then the Utah Raptor jumps over the Gastonia again, but like the dumbass he is, he dives straight to the tail of the Gastonia, critically injuring the Utah Raptor, and the Utah Raptor just slumps to the ground. Thinking the Utah Raptor is done, the Gastonia begins to search for water. The Utah Raptor somehow is still in good shape and gets back up. Now, instead of retreating like anything that actually has a brain, the Utah Raptor attacks the Gastonia, because this is Jurassic fucking Fight Club. So, they keep fighting, and then the Utah Raptor jumps over the Gastonia again, only to land right into where the tail of the Gastonia is about to sink into the Utah Raptor's skin. And so the Gastonia starts beating the shit out of the Utah Raptor, whacking it with its tail multiple times until the Utah Raptor backs away from the tail and then falls to the ground, barely alive. The Utah Raptor would obviously die because of the wounds in a few minutes, and the Gastonia resumes its search for water. So Gastonia won, the scaly Utah Raptor died, Good riddance. I never liked him. He was an idiot as well, and asked for it. Screw that ra the, Oh my god. Screw that Utah Raptor, honestly. God, I hate this show. The next episode is much worse because it's not one dumbass. It's two! With Nano Tyrannus Intelligence. And it's not a fair fight, either. It's a fight between a short-faced bear and an American lion. Now, the designs are pretty accurate for both predators, with the only minor inaccuracies being their heads, and and pretty much, yeah, I think that's it. Their heads having the wrong size. Oh yeah, they're also, they're also given the wrong sizes. <laughs> I, I'm not really sure which one's more accurate in the show. So for now, I'd say it's a tie. 
So the fight is pretty much over Bison. The American Lion took down, and there's a flashback of the Lion taking the Bison down. The narrator says how the Lion's color matches the brush before it attacks the Bison. But then we get to this stupid scene. <coughs> the narrator clearly says that the American Lion moves silently, but you can hear the Lion roaring from the top of its lungs, like... Like, loud as a siren while running at the bison. The lion somehow takes the bison down and now has a meal. I guess the bison was stiff. So the American lion must have been... <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm sorry. So, the, the lion must have been very lucky because the lot. Oh my god, am I drunk? So, the lion is lucky because this bison must have been deaf or something. Um, then the short-faced bear shows up after picking up the scent of the carcass, preparing to ambush the lion. So the short-faced bear then rushes out and roars at the lion as we scare him away, which would obviously work in real life, but because this is Jurassic Fight Club and there needs to be pure awesome bro more fighting, the lion holds his ground like a dumbass and roars back. <coughs> Whoa. Um, then the short-faced bear stands on its hind legs and swings its arms around as a way to scare off the American lion, which would obviously work as well. However, the lion still doesn't run away and pounces on the bear and knocks it to the ground. The short-faced bear is on the ground, but the American lion is too late and is unable to go for the neck of the bear and instead goes for the back of the neck. The short-faced bear shakes the lion off without problem, charges, and smacks the American lion to the ground by the head with its powerful arms. The arms of a short-faced bear are extremely strong, and one hit to the head of those arms can clearly kill an American lion, and somehow the lion is still alive, it's just stung for like 7 seconds, and still doesn't run away. So they keep fighting, roaring at the top of their lungs every 2 seconds, you know the drill. Then the lion charges, but the short-faced bear grabs the lion in, at mid-air, and throws him to the ground. Then the narrator makes a brain-dead statement that the short-faced bear would use wrestling moves in a fight. With what evidence? Bears today don't use wrestling moves either. The short-faced bear is not the fucking Undertaker of the Pleistocene. What in God's name are the people in Jurassic Fight Club smoking? <coughs> oh God, I'll say it now. Inside that writing room, everything was smoky as hell. Like, you couldn't see a thing, and you could just... <coughs> oh my God. Oh my god, sorry. I'm just coughing for no reason. Um, you could just see everyone in there, in one corner, absolutely sky high. Oh my god. Anyways, the short-faced bear then paints the American lion to the ground and takes a small bite <laughs> out of his abdomen. So now you see why both of these two are as stupid as the Nino Tyrannus in episode 2. I'm just disappointed that the bear would think that biting a small chunk out of the abdomen of the American lion would kill him on the spot. You could have just gone for the neck. That would have made quick work. So the bear, thinking the lion is dead like a dumbass, heads to the lion carcass and beast. Not surprisingly, the the American lion is back on its feet, but doesn't leave the short-faced bear alone. <coughs> Instead, he takes the bear by surprise while roaring at the top of his lungs, somehow without the bear hearing him. So I guess the short-faced bear just turned away and just went deaf for like a few seconds. So, when the American lion manages to take the bear by surprise, the short-faced bear is knocked down. What? 
How the hell was the lion able to knock the bear down? The short-faced bear is almost three times larger than the American lion, I think. The lion is polite, though, and attacks the bear when it can defend itself. The short-faced bear then gets the lion away from its neck and then just fucking yeets him 20 feet into the air. And the lion is once again stunned for a few seconds. Dinosaur George says that the American lion is in a lot of pain but won't give up because the lion is a dumbass. Discord, shut up, please. And while Dinosaur George is talking, the American lion gets back up and the most hilarious and ridiculous thing in the series happens. <coughs> oh god. Oh my god, why? The American lion roars at George. Wait, no. And George explains how it's now a fight to the death. Sorry. Because Jurassic Fight Club has to be extremely awesome, bro. Then the American lion charges along with the short-faced bear, and the lion smacks the bear by the head. And what happens next leaves me at a loss for words. What the fuck is the bear doing? He literally fell as if he was in a cartoon. Then the lion is polite to the bear once again, and lets the bear get up before he makes the bear fall over and bite him by the throat. However, the bear regains his strength and fucking eats the lion again. This time, the lion is thrown to the direction of the cave, which I think is the main reason why this episode was made, because there were bones of these animals in the cave, and the lion falls to his death. Which begs the question, where did that cave even come from? We got so many wide shots of the battlefield for this episode, and there was no sign of the cave. Did it just magically appear? Like, what the hell? This episode, oh my god, I hate it so much. Barely anything makes sense. Anyways, on to the next episode. The next episode is River of Death. The episode of pure horror. Before we talk about this battle of pure bullshit, let's talk about the designs, like always. What you're shown here is the Albertosaurus of the series. It's more accurate than the Tyrannosaurus design. Despite the design being too gracile for an animal size and having a lighter failed and shorter tail than the real life counterpart, I feel like there is something wrong with the back as well. But it is a thousand times more accurate than the other dinosaur in this show. That being Jurassic Fight Club's Pachyrhinosaurus. And it's not a Pachyrhinosaurus. In fact, Jurassic Fight Club created a dinosaur species. So. First, I'll show you the real Pachyrhinosaurus for a few seconds. See, there you go. Take a nice look of this animal. See? It, it, it's a nice animal. It, it, it's a nice animal. Um. Yeah. And now, on to the abomination Jurassic Fight Club have created. The nature of this abysmal failure of an abomination terrifies the living fuck out of me. Jurassic Fight Club calls this Pachyrannosaurus. It obviously isn't. The head isn't recognizable, along with its fucking horn, which Pachyrannosaurus doesn't have a horn. There is literally no accuracy on this Pachyrannosaurus design. Even Amazing Dino World's depiction of Pachyrannosaurus is better than Jurassic Fight Club's. This is actually Stupidoceratops succatudinus, and Stupidoceratops succatudinus is not the only species of the genus. The truth is that there is an abundance of Stupidoceratops species, and it is certain that there are more of them waiting to be discovered. Anyways, the battle begins when a herd of Stupidoceratops are attacked by a pair of Albertosaurus. Something I forgot to mention is that this herd of Stupidoceratops pussies out all the time. Instead of chasing away the pair with their horns and numbers, the Stupidoceratops herd 
back off in horror, and one even runs off, causing one of the Albertosaurs to follow them. Oh, and the narrator portrays the Albertosaurs as bloodthirsty monsters, as he does in every episode of Jurassic Fight Club. So, the other Albertosaurus doesn't follow their partner for some reason, by the way. The chasing Albertosaurus catches up to the Stupidoceratops, but then the Stupidoceratops is no longer a coward, and holds their ground and fights the Albertosaurus. Um, there is one part in the fight where the Stupidoceratops jabs the leg of the Albertosaurus, and somehow the Albertosaurus looks unharmed and doesn't leave the Stupidoceratops alone. Later in the fight, the Albertosaurus manages to bite into the neck of the Stupidoceratops, finishing them off. Meanwhile, with the other Albertosaurus, the Stupidoceratops herd won't chase them away, even though there is only one Albertosaurus to deal with now. In fact, they back up so much, they all fall into a river, and they die for some reason. Then the Albertosaurus finds the dead Stupidoceratops herd in a pile, so the Albertosaurus enjoys the Ceratops in the buffet. Uh, that's pretty much it for this episode. Pretty stupid too, because the victory would go to the herd because of obvious reasons. <coughs> Anyways, on to the next episode. Um, Raptors vs. T-Rex. That matchup reminds me of a certain book I will react to later. On to the designs. So here we have Arcura Raptor. And this depiction is just awful, despite being more accurate than the Utah Raptor design. The design is more heavily built and has a thicker skull than the real life counterpart, and there is barely any feathering. Also, they hunt in packs, which is wrong as well. Next is Edmontosaurus, and yes, there is Edmontosaurus in this battle. It's more accurate than the Archaeoraptor, but still inaccurate. Obviously, it's too thin, too lanky. It also lacks the midline feature scales and is in a bipedal posture, which is wrong. And then we have the Tyrannosaurus. Despite being the most accurate one in the show, wait no, episode, sorry. Despite being the most accurate one in the episode, I just have a big problem with it, especially on the design. In this episode, the Tyrannosaurus is in the title, but barely in it. Also, why is it so hard to trace over the skull of the animal? All their problems are their pronated wrists and their goofy looking legs! Like seriously, these inaccuracies on this depiction of a Tyrannosaurus really get on my nerves. It's easy to make an accurate design of a Tyrannosaurus. There were so many accurate designs of a Tyrannosaurus during that time. It's not even Tyrannosaurus anymore. Oh my god. <sighs> Screw this. Let's just go on to the battle. So, the battle begins when a bull in Montosaurus hangs around and is ambushed by a pack of Archaeoraptors. In real life, this fight would never happen because Dromaeosaurids don't hunt in packs, and having an Archaeoraptor fight in a Montosaurus is like having a fox fight a bull elephant, so the Archaeoraptor wouldn't go for an adult in Montosaurus at all. Uh, that's just pretty much... That That's just suicide. That's just extremely stupid. As the fight goes on, I think a couple members of the Archaeoraptor pack die before the Demontosaurus drops dead. And then... I just... I, I just question my existence, because... I think four members died in the Archaeoraptor pack. It took... Like, it costed four members of the Archaeoraptor pack to kill a bullet Montosaurus. And then, in Gang of Killers, 
it cost nine Dionicus to kill a single Tenontosaurus. What? What the hell is going on? Oh my fucking god. So, after the Dinomotosaurus drops dead, the Tyrannosaurus then comes to steal the meal of the Arthur Raptors. So, yeah. Something that actually made me happy is that the Archer Raptors actually retreat instead of holding their ground like dumbasses. I'm so grateful for those Archer Raptors. Actually, knowing better. Then the Tyrannosaurus picks up the Edmontosaurus with its jaws, which is wrong because an adult Edmontosaurus is too big to be picked up by the jaws of a Tyrannosaurus. Then the tail of the Dimontosaurus falls off and is left for the Archer Raptor pack to eat when the Tyrannosaurus takes the carcass with it. I don't know why the Tyrannosaurus just left the tail there. I guess this Tyrannosaurus was kind and left the tail for the Archer Raptors on purpose. This Tyrannosaurus is very different than the mother Tyrannosaurus from episode 2, who looks like the rage monster from Dude Perfect. I guess this episode is better than episode 2? But it's still not the best. Now, onto the final episode, Armageddon. But before we talk about that, it's time for the prehistoric SmackDown final request draw. We will reveal who won the draw. And the winner is. Torbon, with the request being Torvasaurus Gurnai versus Sorofagadax Maximus. So, stay tuned for the next episode of Prehistoric SmackDown, guys. Congratulations, Torvon. And now, back to Jurassic Fight Club. Yay. Okay, so I don't remember much of this episode, but it's the last one, and it is about the extinction of the non-Avon dinosaurs, and explains what happened in the meteor colliding onto Earth, debris flying everywhere, along with fire spreading and tsunamis and all that. I think they forgot to include the volcanic activity which was part of the extinction of the non-avian dinosaurs. And before the end of the series, the narrator explains how animals survived the extinction and all that. Pretty much the surviving animals were small enough to survive the extinction, lived in caves or flew to safety like the birds, which are the avian dinosaurs. I don't remember much of the episode, so that's all I'm going to say. And that's it. We're finally done. What a hell of a ride. Watching an entire series where things weren't taken seriously at the slightest. And all that awesome, bro. That was... That felt like getting stung by an entire hive of hornets. At least it's finally over. So, there you have it. The rest of the episodes. And the next upcoming video is to test the animation for our speculative evolution series, The New Era, so stay tuned for that as well. Okay, time to wrap things up. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to like and subscribe. And I'll see you on the next one. Bye.